Joining us now, Council of Economic Advisors Chairman Kevin Hassett. Uh, it, it, Mr. Chairman. Hey, good morning, guys. Good. I see hey. you're all there, yeah. Yeah, we're all here. We're glad uh, you're, you're here with us. Um, one of the, the comments or sound bites I might have played uh, for, with uh, Secretary Mnuchin was uh, when we said, wow, if you make a million dollars or more, you, you're in a heap of trouble. Uh, and, and that's weird for, a, for tax reform. And it's anti-Reagan, it's anti-heritage, it's anti, you know, anywhere that, that you read, normal supply side is, it would be that, you know, the top 10% pay 70%. If you're gonna exclude or actually raise taxes on wealthy individuals, it, it seems like it's counterintuitive to what the whole rationale for this is, unless it's just all about corporations, Kevin. Well, I, I think that there's a big middle class tax cut. There's an ample amount of simplification. And the fact is that everybody up on the Hill has a different idea about the trade off between equity and efficiency. And they're working out a deal between all those folks that can make a big fundamental reform that becomes law. That's what the White House's objective has been from Did the start you, is to go through regular order and to let those folks work it out. And, and you know, for sure, the president uh, preferred uh, the, where we started in the first place with a 35 percent rate. But he also respects regular order. Uh, we're talking about the salt stuff and, and just actual apples to apples comparisons about, uh, let's say you have a lot of people that voted for Republicans because they thought that at worst you'd do corporate tax cut and their taxes would stay where they are. Very few of them thought that their taxes were going to be sharply raised by a Republican administration. And that's well, what's happening. Well, well, I don't think that, that there are very many sharply raised uh, people in, in the distribution tables. But the fact is that people voted for President Trump because they wanted him to turn the economy around. And as you know, I, I've been saying on this show for 20 years that one of the first things that we could do to turn the economy around is to get the corporate rate back to being competitive. And, uh, you know, I don't think that having a little bit more or less, you know, if you're making more than a million is going to be your primary concern if we sustain this 3 percent growth that we've been experiencing in recent quarters. I actually asked Treasury Mnuchin, that, uh, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, that uh, so what? It's, what do you tell these people? It's for the greater good. I, sorry, guys, but uh, you know we want corporations to do better and wage gains and stuff. But you're going to have to pay for it. That's what we. That's how you should. That's what you would tell this. What you're calling is a small amount of a small group. It's not really a small group of people in New Jersey and New York. Right. For, for most people around the country, then the lower rate uh, overpowers the, the state and local deduction. But there are some people in really high tax jurisdictions where that's not true. And I think what they should do is, is get on the phone and call up their local officials and tell them to try to run a right. more efficient government. You know, that's, that, in fact, is, is what the incentive that's not there right now that will be that's back. That's in the in journal the today that Trenton needs to get its act together and maybe this will force them to get their act together. Yeah, Although and it's Kevin, not just Trenton. Well, yeah. we were talking about yeah. some other proposals like uh, the BAT. We were talking about mm -hmm. how that wouldn't be a huge problem. It would drastically change things, but it would be okay if you put that in over a number of years. This is going to happen instantaneously. Those states won't have time to prepare uh, or to try and change how they do business, which you know, could lead you to think that maybe New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Illinois, California could be dealing with states that, that slide into some pretty tough economic times, at least for the foreseeable future, until they can change, correct? No, I think that that's incorrect because, again, you're, you're talking about a few people at the very top and they've got plenty of resources. And we already see uh, uh, you know, mobility <laughs> from high tax to low tax states. That's already going on, not just because of the state and local income tax deduction. But I know, but that's I, not I don't, an argument I don't for why those states would be disruption. okay. That's an argument for why more people might leave and go to Florida. That's not a No, I'm a saying reason. It's, it's not a, the huge change that you're characterizing is what I'm saying. Uh, do you... Um, do you have a preference uh, on some of the provisions in the House versus some of the provisions in the Senate? And, um, you know, I, I think the House was solid. It, it wasn't mm -hmm. even close. But, I mean, the Senate right now, I can think of six guys that could do that, that thumbs down and become famous on, on uh, the day this, uh, this needs to try to pass, Kevin. I, I don't know. I don't have any idea out of the six which ones. It could be any of them. I don't trust any of those, the, of those six to, to do this. Well, I think the expectation is that they're going to have the votes to get the thing uh, through the Senate uh, right after we get back from Thanksgiving break. And as Secretary Mnuchin said, the hope is that the president will be able to sign something by Christmas. I think might even leak into the Hanukkah season if we get a little bit lucky. 
Kevin, one of the other issues over the weekend was just what happens in the Senate bill specifically. The Senate um, has tried to make sure that they can keep the corporate rates uh, permanent at 20 percent, right. but the individual rates are going to sunset because that's what they have to do to make sure that they can stay within the one and a half trillion dollars. Um, if you get 10 years out and if there are no changes made, the law as they have seen it or the bill as the Senate is considering it, would be something that would raise taxes on people across the board, people making $50,000, people making $100,000. There are a lot of people who would be hang, paying higher taxes in 10 years. How do you think that gets worked out in reconciliation? Right. Well, I, I think that they are probably going to have to have some stuff expire in order to meet the reconciliation rules. And it's a moving target as they negotiate with the House to see, well, this thing goes in, that costs money, and so that means something else has to expire. But I think it's the intent of everybody who votes for the bill that this be a permanent change in tax law. And we have quite a bit of precedent to go on for this. If you go back and look at, say, the Bush tax cuts, when President Obama was elected, he came into office and he extended all of them at the beginning, and all but a tiny little bit, just but the top marginal rate, uh, became permanent mm -hmm. in the end. And, and so... The budget rules make politicians do this. This isn't the first set of politicians that have had to do it. No, and but the you did make an exception. This, this rule does make sure that it's kept in place for corporations, not for individuals. And I, I, right. I guess the yeah. optics but of that may be difficult. But, but again, the corporations are deciding whether they're going to locate a plant here or Ireland or some other country, and they're making a decision that's a capital investment right. that lasts 20, 30 years. And so the expiration could have a much bigger I, impact I on their location yeah. decision it's than, than on, say, your location decision, right? Kevin. Um, yeah. Last month, uh, Larry Summers uh, made some uh, pretty um, provocative statements about your analysis of the wage gains that would uh, uh, result from all of this. Uh, he said that he is proudly guilty of asserting that uh, your analysis is some com combination of dishonest, incompetent, and absurd. He goes on to say there is no peer-reviewed support for your central claim uh, that cutting the corporate tax rate from 35 percent to 20 percent would, wa would raise wages by $4,000. Her worker. What do you say to that? Oh, the Same thing you said last false. time, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the <laughs> statement exactly is absolutely false. false. We've got two studies out could, that are filled with peer-reviewed studies. It. You know, my own paper uh, on this was peer-reviewed in right. a top journal. There's anyway, so so it's just a false statement. We could, we we, we anyway. Uh, let me ask you. The, the, you know, entitlements. Nothing. Uh, yeah, I, there are people that say over 10 years baked in the cake, we got another 10 trillion. So we'll, we'll match what we did in the past eight years. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't do, and then entitlements are totally uh, not touched. I know that in the past you've, you've looked at entitlements and, and have the notion that, that this is something that we can't let go on forever. Will that ever be on your plate? If this gets done, will you then move to try and trying to talk uh, President Trump into looking at, at ways of fixing that? Because that, you know, these deficits are peanuts compared to what we owe uh, for, for entitlements. Right. Well, you know, the president has already said that next up after tax reform will be welfare reform and welfare reform in part will be looking at entitlements, I'm sure, and trying to shore them up and make them more efficient. I think in the long run, as, as you say, every economist will tell you that we've got to ultimately pay the bills that we've uh, booked. And I think we're something like 80 or 90 trillion short if we add it all up going over the next 100 years. And so at some point, government's going to have to act. But the first step of getting the economy going again and growing around 3% with a tax reform seems like a good first move for me. Could you see when, when you get right down to the very end of this thing, and it, what, is there any way that the 20 percent is not going to be uh, the president would finally say you know what you got too much arguing going on for these these small little things that you're you know you've got all these things you need to do to get to 20 let's do 22 is that possible or, or is the last thing he finally gives in on as far as negotiation and that's not going to happen <laughs> you know that that's above my pay grade but i can say that that he's had three non-negotiables from the start and, and you know what they are middle class tax reform simplification and a 20 percent rate and those are non-negotiables and i presume that means they're not going to be negotiated hey uh, kevin it, it yeah. seems to me like this is not a simpler tax code i mean it seems like mm -hmm. this is a look there are changes uh, understand there's going to be tax reform in this, understand that there are tax cuts coming in a lot of different directions, but it does not seem simpler to me. Oh, I think it is simpler if you consider that there's a, a big standard deduction and so many people won't have to itemize and we'll just have a very, very simple tax. Uh, there are still all kinds of winners it. and losers, particularly in the corporate law. 
But that's always true. If you start out with lots of, you know, there are 150 million taxpayers out there, right? And they're going to be winners and losers no matter what you do. But the fact is that there'll be a lot less uh, compliance costs uh, under this code. It, and that'll be true uh, both on the individual and the corporate side because the corporate side is moving closer to an international and norm. So it's, you know, I mean, it seems like you'd still have compliance issues with trying to figure out who's going to be classifying themselves as a pass-through, who's going to be classifying themselves as a corporation and all the changes that go along Right. Well, that. we have those now and, and they'll be simpler after this bill. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.